Back in 2017, uh, there was a Time article about contagion preparedness. And again, this past October in 2019, Johns Hopkins had a simulation of a coronavirus uh, pandemic. Um, and I just was wondering how we feel we're going to be able to be better prepared the next time around. Right now, the U.S. represents 4% of the world's population, but we're triggering at a, just over 200,000 deaths, which represents about 22% of the deaths worldwide. So do you see us learning from this? And are we going to put things in place that will help us the next time around? Because we know these pathogens will keep developing. Well, we thought we had done that. You know, we had a pandemic preparedness plan that was actually rated by the very John Hopkins as the best preparedness of any country in the world. Isn't that paradoxical <laughs> that we wound up having the worst impact in the world? We were the worst hit country. So something went wrong. We don't know. I'm sure, you know, I'm not sure. I'm absolutely positive. It's multifactorial. It isn't just one thing. Uh, yes, there's a lot of lessons learned. And when this is all over, which it will be, it will end. We need to look back and dissect out, do a postmortem and figure out what could we have done differently to prevent such a degree of morbidity and mortality in our country. Right. I think you touched on uh, the answer to my next question is, is uh, I know it may still be a little bit early, but where do you see the future of this particular virus and this pandemic? Is it going to be seasonal? Is it going to be endemic, periodic hotspots, or is it going to fade away, hopefully like SARS did? What's, what's your take on You know, I, I, I think it's so easily transmissible that I don't think it's going to disappear like SARS. Whether it becomes seasonal in the sense of returning and being around chronically is going to depend completely on the level of efficacy of the virus and how many people get vaccinated. If it's a really effective vaccine and most everybody wants to and does get vaccinated, you could probably come close to eliminating it from the country. I don't think you're going to eradicate it. If we don't have a good vaccine, or people don't uniformly get vaccinated, then you might see it hang around just the same way as the common cold viruses hang around. You know, likely seasonal, not completely seasonal, but not disappearing. And that would be a real problem because the common cold viruses generally don't kill old people, nor do they kill people with diabetes and obesity and hypertension. This virus does. So I would hate to see this virus hang around, you know, for a bunch of seasons. I'd like to see it get eliminated. And that's the reason why I say my hope is in that we get an effective vaccine and that a lot of people take that vaccine. In closing, I want to ask a question that really only somebody like yourself has a perspective on. Uh, you've been an ambassador to public health science for six different presidents. Uh, how often do you think the ideology of the president's influence federal response to different crises? To a greater or lesser degree, probably everybody, mostly to a lesser degree, as opposed to a greater degree. You know, I just think that, forget putting the administration aside, I think that in this country, the degree of divisiveness is stunning. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. You don't need me to tell you that. I mean, when you make a public health issue and convert it into political opposition, where, you know, there should be no argument about wearing a mask or physical distancing. It becomes you're on this side or that side, you know. That is unfortunate, but that's happened. And I think that's interfered with the quality of the response in this country.